Hello world, today we're going to create our price database. If you haven't been following along, you're going to have to check out the previous video where I show you how to connect to a Postgres database using SQ Alchemy. But if you have been following along, today we're going to create our first two tables. We're going to create our symbol table and our minute bar table. But instead of me just talking about it, why don't I show you on the ERD? An ERD or an entity relationship diagram shows us the various relationships between the tables and their fields and the field types. It's that easy. Now, you'll also notice I've color coded the tables that we're going to create today in purple. These tables, or the symbol and minute bar tables, are applicable to all of the markets that we're going to be covering, such as crypto, stocks, futures, and forex. And you'll notice there's some tables in green below, which we're going to cover in a separate video. These tables will enable us to perform analysis on stocks, or I should say, fundamental analysis on stocks as we're going to import quarterly financial data into the securities fundamental database and daily metric data such as the EV to EBITDA or PE ratios into the daily metrics database. Now some of the tables that we're going to create aren't listed here yet such as the economic tables where we're going to pull from various sources such as the Federal Reserve, the constituents tables where we're going to have the S&P 500 and NASDAQ constituents, but for now, this is where we're going to start. In future videos, we'll add to this ERD. I just didn't want to make it too overwhelming at first. Now, with the understanding of what an entity relationship diagram is and the tables that we're going to create today are, let's create some code. We'll start by opening up a new terminal window and logging into Postgres. Now, keep in mind, we're using SQ Alchemy, which abstracts away the technical details of whatever database implementation we're using. So you theoretically could use any database that you want, assuming SQL Alchemy supports it. Now, I'm going to use PSQL for those that are following along to make things easier. But like I said, you could use whatever database you want. Your command just might be a little bit different. So first, we'll list all of the databases. Now, you'll notice that no alpha database exists. But in the previous episode, we created code that if no database exists when we try to connect, it would create the database for us. In order to do that, we need to make sure that the alpha user has super user powers or has the ability to create databases. And we can do that by typing alter user alpha with super user, semicolon enter. Now this will change the alpha user to a super user. I don't suggest doing this if this is a production machine, you should only ever give the minimum amount of privileges any user needs in order to connect and do what they need to do. But since ours is just a research machine, not a big deal. So I'm going to quit out here and clear the screen. Now we'll jump over to Jupyter Notebook. We'll start in the usual fashion, and that's by grabbing our imports. There are a few of them, so we'll cover each one one at a time. We'll do import enum or enum. Essentially, enum allows us to create uh, a bunch of constants that we can enumerate or iterate over. For our case, we're going to create a market class and we're going to inherit the enum class so that way we can enumerate over our various markets, which will be crypto, forex, futures, and stocks. Okay. We'll also grab uh, NumPy and pandas. We'll do import NumPy as np, import pandas as pd. And then we'll grab quite a few things from SQ Alchemy. Um, specifically, these will be the different fields and some constraint and relationship information. So we'll do from SQ Alchemy import big integer. We need big int for our minute bar IDs because if we only use a standard integer, it's likely that we'll run out of IDs causing problems in the future. Boolean column. Date, date, time, and then float, foreign key. This is most of the stuff we saw in the ERD diagram previously. Let's see, integer, string, unique, constraint. So we're going to have constraints over multiple columns, some and logic and func. We'll also want to grab relationship from LRM, so we can create relationships to a various classes. Relationship. Wow. There we go. Having trouble typing. 
And then from the previous episode, we're going to want to grab um, base and DB in session uh, from PSQL to from PSQL. We created again last video, import base, DB in session, then enter. If all works, it will run and will actually create a database behind the scenes. So let's switch over to the terminal and see if that actually happened. With PSQL, we'll list our databases, and it looks like whenever we did connect uh, to Postgres, it created our alpha database for us. That's great. Go ahead and clear the screen, and we'll jump back over to Jupyter. Now, with our imports available to us, let's create our market class. Class market. Lesson enum. And then we'll create our four markets. will be crypto, stocks, forex, and futures. Easy enough. Now let's create our symbol table. Now we create our tables as classes in SQL Alchemy. So we'll create class, symbol, base, our table name, which is different than our class name. Our class name is capitalized. The symbol, do ID. Column. This is just an integer. We don't need a uh, big int here because we're not going to have that many symbols. Primary key true. Auto increment true. The ticker column. And we'll make it 50. Now, for all of these fields, we're going to set nullable equal to false, meaning it has to exist. So we'll do name, name column. String 200, nullable or false, market column, that's in our market class, equal or false, and active Boolean, nullable equal false. That looks like that worked. Okay, perfect. Now we'll create our minute bar class. Class minute bar, that's in base, the table name, equal to minute bar. The ID is our big int, as we mentioned previously. That's the primary key is true. Eight column. Line false. Now we'll add our open, high, low, and close. And now let's add our symbol relationship. New symbol ID column. The integer foreign key. Symbol ID, and then on update or delete, we cascade. Because if we delete any symbol, it should delete the minute bars too. Cascade on delete, cascade, and nullable false. And then now we're going to create our relationship with symbol. Relationship, and this is with the symbol class, okay, and we back reference the symbol table. So back ref equals symbol. Now this just creates a class relationship that we can use when in our Python code. Relationship, and then we'll create one uh, unique constraint. We should never have a symbol ID and the date being the same, right? So we should have a unique date for every symbol. So, and remember that date is actually a date time. And hit enter. Perfect. Oh, no. See here what I do. That should be like that.
Okay, now all that's left to do is to create our database. So that create a function for this. Oops. Click base metadata create all. And this will create all of the classes um, that we provided to SQL Alchemy. We'll click create, enter, and hopefully uh, that ran. We can go ahead and check our terminal to see if it did. We'll log in the PSQL. We have alpha, we'll connect the alpha. Type in DP for the different tables. So we have both the minute bar and symbol. Left bar from symbol. We'll see all of our columns that we created and same thing for minute bar. And you can see that we have that and we also have the symbol ID for the relationship and SQL for me behind the scenes understands that it is a one-to-many relationship, and we'll be able to use that whenever we're manipulating this data with Python. Congratulations, you did it. You now have a price database that you can use to import any asset with minute bar data. In fact, we're gonna use this database that we created today to import crypto data in this video right here. Now, if you haven't seen the previous video on obtaining that crypto data, I'll link this right here. So those are the two videos you need, this one first, that one second. And I'd like to ask you, if you love this video, please like and subscribe. It lets the Google algorithm know that this is a video worth sharing. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.